and welcome everyone. I am your Kevinly Father. Trump just put out a 50-minute, nobody asked for it, tirade about voter fraud. I haven't watched it yet. I wanted to share this with you guys. So we'll go through it. We'll fact check it. Uh, I listened to about two minutes of it on Twitter and then realized, wait, there's more? And then went on Facebook. And here it is. It's 50 minutes long. And it's all going to be pure nonsense about how Joe Biden can't possibly be the president. So welcome aboard. Uh, This is the live stream. This is what we do. We chat truth to power. We fact check. We have some fun together. So grab yourself a drink. The drinking word today is fraud. Ah, you can, that counts as well. You can take a drink for that as well. I am your Kevinly Father. If you want to support the broadcast, do this, uh, or go to KevinlyFather.com and you can become a patron there. So hello everyone. Hi Lynn. Hi Ruth Ann. Hi Andy. Uh, hi OK. Uh, OJ, KK, JK, K. Uh, hey, uh, whoever else is in here as well. So, uh, Marcy, uh, good to see you. So this is, uh, this is the president of the United States who has lost the election. The election has been certified in many areas by Republicans, the people on his team. But he insists, and he's about to insist for 46 minutes and 8 seconds, that this is all rigged. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Thank you. You're welcome. This may be the most important speech I've ever made. I want to provide an update on our ongoing efforts to expose the tremendous voter fraud and irregularities which took place. Let me know if uh, volume doesn't work for you guys. Place during the ridiculously long November 3rd elections. We used to have what was called Election Day. Now we have election days, weeks and months, and lots of bad things happened during this ridiculous period of time, especially when you have to prove almost nothing to exercise our greatest privilege, the right to vote. As president, I have no... No, you, you have to prove that you're a citizen in order to vote. That's how it works. No higher duty than to defend the laws and the Constitution of the United States. That is why I am determined to protect our election system, which is now under coordinated assault and siege. For oh, months leading oh. up to the presidential election, we were warned that we should not declare a premature victory. We were told repeatedly that it would take weeks, if not months, to determine the winner, to count the absentee ballots, and to verify the results. We we didn't know it would be weeks, but it would be a few days because we knew that the absentee ballots were coming in and that some states couldn't count those until Election Day. And it was going to take some time. So, yeah. My opponent was told to stay away from the election. Don't campaign. We don't need you. We've got it. He did campaign. This election is done. This is from today, Anita. In fact, they were acting like they already knew what the outcome was going to be. We did. We control all the elections. So we knew we knew how this would end up. I mean, that's what we do. Come on. We're not idiots. We control everything. The voting machines, the paper, the pen you write with, the Sharpies. It's all under our domain. It's not dominion. It's dominion. You're pronouncing it wrong. This is true, which is why you shouldn't bother voting uh, in January for a Republican, because we've already decided that the two Democrats are winning in the Senate. So... Thanks for your time. I'm just trying to save you some time. They had it covered, and perhaps they did, very sadly for our country. We did. It was all very, very strange. Within days after the election, we witnessed an orchestrated effort to anoint a winner, even while many key states were still being counted. The constitutional process must be allowed to continue. Well, that was an edit. So they've got two cameras set up, and when he makes a mistake, they just go to the other camera. We are going to defend the honesty of the vote by ensuring that every legal ballot is counted. Yeah. And that no illegal ballot is counted. This is not just about honoring the votes of 74 million Americans who voted for me. It's about honoring the votes of 80 million Americans who voted for Joe Biden. It's about ensuring that Americans can have faith in this election and in all future elections. Today, I will detail some of the shocking irregularities, oh, abuses, good. and fraud that have been revealed in recent weeks. Please but do. But before laying out just a small portion of the evidence we have uncovered, and we have so much evidence, I want to explain the corrupt mail-in balloting scheme that Democrats systematically put into place 
that allowed voting to be altered, especially in swing states, which they had to win. They just didn't know that it was going to be. In Pennsylvania, it was the Republicans, but okay. Be that tough because we were leading in every swing state by so much, far greater than they ever thought possible. While it has long been understood that the Democrat political machine engages in voter fraud from Detroit to Philadelphia to Milwaukee, Atlanta, so many other places. What changed this year was the Democrat Party's relentless push to print and mail out tens of millions of ballots sent to unknown recipients with virtually no safeguards of it. No, every, every one of them had a known recipient. You can't send something out to unknown recipients. You can't send a, an absentee ballot or a, a ballot request to occupant. It's just not how it works at all, anywhere. Any kind. This allowed fraud and abuse to occur on a scale never seen before. Using the pandemic as a pretext, Democrat politicians and judges drastically changed election procedures just months. And so did Republicans. And in some cases, weeks before the election on the 3rd of November. Very rarely were legislatures involved and not constitutionally true. they had to be. Not, not true. Not true at all. Be involved. But very, very rarely, and you'll... M many of these laws were actually passed after 2018 and in 2019, before COVID even got involved. See that as we continue to file our suits, it's constitutionally absolutely incorrect what took place, even from a legal standpoint. That That is what the Constitution is. It's, it's a legal standpoint. <laughs> okay, sure. Many states such as Nevada and California sent millions of live ballots to every person on their voter rolls, whether those individuals had requested ballots or not. That's true. Whether they were dead or alive, they got ballots. Other states such as Minnesota, and Michigan. Not a single dead person voted. Michigan and Wisconsin instituted universal absentee balloting right in the middle of an election year, sending yeah. absentee. That, that's fine. That's totally allowed. Absentee ballot request forms to all voters on all rolls. It on all rolls? It didn't matter who they were. This colossal expansion of absentee ballot request forms to all voters on all rolls. It didn't matter who they were. Rolls. This colossal expansion of mail-in voting opened the floodgates to massive fraud. It's a widely known fact that the voting rolls are packed with people who are not lawfully eligible to vote, including those who are deceased, have moved out of their state, and even are non-citizens of our country. That, that's, uh, except for the non-citizens part, that is true. Country. Beyond this, the records are riddled with errors, wrong uh, addresses, duplicates. John, not a single dead person voted. They're dead. Dead. I don't know if you've ever been around a dead person, but they're boring. They don't do anything but decompose. Look at entries and many other issues. This is not disputed. It has never been disputed. It is disputed that there are a significant number of illegal aliens on the voting rolls. Dozens of counties in the key swing states have more registered voters on the rolls than they have voting age citizens. In yeah, because when you get up and move, no, you, let's say you move from uh, California to Texas, you don't tell the county that you just moved out of, hey, I've moved, please take me off the rules. Nobody does that. So after a couple of cycles, it goes away. And hardly anybody, and this may I may be wrong on this, and judges, you can check me on this. When people die, they don't subsequently call their county and say, hey, I'm dead. Uh, please do not have me on the voter rolls anymore. Oh, the judges say they do. Okay, or am I correct? Am I the one that's correct? I'm the one that's correct. So the judges agree with me on this one. Including 67 counties in Michigan. All of this is evidence. In Wisconsin, the state's board of elections could not confirm the residency of- Uh, John, no, some people vote in their names. 
Uh, for example, there was a Trump voter who used his mother's ballot and voted for Trump illegally. Uh, he was caught and charged because they know who's dead. So when they do get a ballot from a dead person, they know it in most states. In Pennsylvania, for instance. In fact, Philadelphia uh, went through and every accusation of a dead person turned out to be completely false. A lot of people have the same name. My name's Kevin Williams. There's a lot of Kevin Williams out there. And a lot of them are dead. I've been dead before. Spoiler alert, it's boring, bo really boring. More than 100,000 people, but repeatedly refused to remove those names from its voter rolls before the election. They knew why nobody else did. I knew why. But they, you just said that nobody else knew. They're illegal voters. It is a travesty that in the year 2020, we do not have any means of verifying the eligibility of those who cast ballots in an election and such That's not an true. important election. Not true. Is, not true at all. Or determining not who they even are. Close to true. Whether they live in the state. No. Nope. Or whether they are even American citizens. Not true. We have no idea. We, we have do. in all swing states major infractions or outright fraud, which is far more in numbers or votes than we need to overturn the results of a state. In other words, in Wisconsin, as an example, where we were way up on election night, they ultimately had us miraculously losing by 20,000 votes. It was a miracle. Thank you, Jesus. And I can show you right here. Oh, OK. That Wisconsin, we're leading by a lot. You're, you're going to show us with a poster? which is reflecting the lights from up above. You, you don't have the capability, the technological capability to put it up on a screen somehow. This video was pre-recorded, by the way, and he's still going to hold up the poster chart. Here's some poster board, people. And then. Yeah. At 342. Uh-huh. In the morning. Yeah. There was this. It was a massive dump of votes. Uh-huh. Mostly Biden. Right. Almost all Biden. Uh-huh. And to this day, everyone's trying to figure out where did it come from? No. But I no. They know exactly where it comes I'm just, I'm looking this up right now. I have it. Hold on. This is, uh, this is from Milwaukee, uh, TMJ4. So Channel 4, NBC, Milwaukee. City of Milwaukee hopes to have all votes counted by 3 a.m. Let me refresh it because there's a video right here. Let's just watch this video, see what they have to say here. For, for everyone, for the media, to report out to the public. Um, as our board in the back had shown, we have um, all 11 in-person uh, municipalities have are reported. And of the eight central count municipalities, three have now reported in the village of Shorewood, village of Greendale, and the city of South Milwaukee. Um, we expect uh, West Dallas, uh, they have uh, anticipated uh, reporting in and about being ready in about an hour or so, hour and a half perhaps. Uh -huh. We did just receive an update at, uh, from the city of Milwaukee, and they are, have processed over 140,000 uh, absentee ballots thus far. This is, a, is, this is 1130 at night on Election Day. Which leaves about approximately 30,000. So they are estimating three to four hours uh, now. So we are upping our estimates and hoping to be done by about 3 a.m. Uh, so that's better than 5 a.m., and uh, we'll continue to... He said 3 a.m. and they weren't dumped until 3.42 a.m. That's it. Trump's the president. They were saying this for days. They estimated somewhere between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. When they were going to get. Here's the way it works in Milwaukee. In Wisconsin, in general. You can't start counting the votes until the day of the election. So they started counting at 7 a.m. The absentee ballots. They started counting the 7 a.m. ballots absentee. Every state has different laws. They started counting... Now, by law in Wisconsin, and this is unique, they can't stop counting. They're not allowed to like, okay, it's midnight, everybody. Thanks for your work. Go home. We'll come back tomorrow. They can't. So days before the election, and in this case on election day, they were saying we're going to get done between 3 and 6 in the morning, 342. And why is that spike so big that the president's holding up? Well, uh, because there's a lot of people in Milwaukee right there. And some of those people, 
I'll see if I can zoom in. He's doing this on poster board, which is just ridic, but it's Trump. Uh, so this portion right here, that's for President Trump. All of that, the blue, it's blue and red, but it's hard to see. Uh, I've seen this chart elsewhere. Uh, this is a conspiracy theory. All of that's for Biden, which is exactly what you would expect to happen in Milwaukee, which is a Democratic stronghold. But nobody can figure out, nobody can figure out what the hell is going on with this vote. This man is truly, truly an idiot. And then if you look at my beautiful clothes, no one's able to see them but me because I'm the brainest. I am the brainest in the whole land. And you can see their people. I wish you could see them, but you can't because you're Democrat. You're stupid. And these are the most beautiful clothes. They are so beautiful, I can't even feel them. I went from leading by a lot. Leading by a lot. Those are, that's math. To losing by a little. Yeah. And that's right here. That's at 342 in the morning. That's Wisconsin. Right. Which is, as we just saw, exactly when they thought that they would be done counting the ballots. They can't even report the ballots until they're done counting them. And they can't stop. Right on target. Terrible thing. Terrible, terrible thing. But we will... Counting the ballots in Milwaukee is a new euphemism. Yeah, I'm going to see you guys later. Uh, I think I'm going to hit the sack early, maybe uh, count some Milwaukee ballots. We'll have far more, many times... Then in the morning, I'm going to do the dump. Early, early morning, right after my coffee. Times more than the tw uh, Trip and Truth says, actually, there's so much evidence of voter fraud, it's not even funny. Your Trump impression is better than the points you're making. Thank you, uh, dead giveaway right there. Trip and, uh, it's your, Y-O-U-R-E. There's a, a, a apostrophe in between the two. It's two words. You put them together, contract them, and there's a... a isn't it? It's amazing. Do we have, I would just, one time, I'd love to have a Trump supporter come in here that understands how basic English works. Thanks for your uh, input, though. I appreciate you complimenting my Trump uh, impression. I do appreciate that. But seriously, how are we to take you seriously if you don't even know basic English? If it's your second language, I apologize. I'm not trying to make fun of you. It's just, it's every single time. You guys and you're your. <laughs> just. Anyway, we'd love to see the evidence. We would love it if there were actual evidence. I'd have a great time with it. Because I love getting into this stuff. Literally, literally, I was looking at the Milwaukee. That's why I had it ready. Because I was looking at the Milwaukee count. Because I knew it was there. And I was like, wait a minute. Let me check, uh, check days of your. Y-O-U-R. Yes, David. That works as well, either way. But I'm looking forward to Biden being in charge and going back to the days of yore. Uh, let's get let's get on with Trump. I got, uh, what was it? Oh, should I play the Rudy for Trippin? Maybe Trippin's gone by now. 20,000 votes needed to overturn the state. If we are right about the fraud, Joe Biden can't be president. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of votes. We're talking about numbers like no- We're not. Nobody has ever seen before, just as an example in certain states, we'll be down by, let's say, 7,000 votes. But we'll find okay. later on 20,000. Th there's no there's no state where he's down by 7,000 votes off the top of my head, I don't think. Is there? 50,000, 100. Isn't, isn't Georgia 12,000? Isn't that the smallest margin? I could be wrong. I haven't looked in the last couple of days of the margins, but last time I checked, that's where we were. 100,000, 200,000. 800 million zillions. Discrepancies or fraudulent votes. And that includes votes that went through when they were not allowed to be seen by Republican poll watchers because the poll watchers were locked out of the building or people that- L Literally never happened. Not a thing. Now. That you're allowed to have in many states, uh, for example, we were watching Arizona, you can have one Republican, one Democratic uh, poll watcher in the room. That That is what you are legally allowed to have. Anybody else who shows up and says, stop the count or keep count the counting, the count we need, where, what, where are we, we want more? Stop, keep the count, stop counting, let's keeping. Those idiots don't get in because you've already got a registered poll worker in the room. 
There was not a single example that people can find of Republicans being thrown out of the building, except for one guy in Philadelphia. But that's another story, because apparently there was already somebody inside. Uh, so, anyway. That innocently came to vote on November 3rd, who were all excited about their vote. They were happy. They were proud to be citizens of the United States of America. Okay. And they went up and they said, I'd like to vote. And they were told that they can't vote. I'm sorry. They so, so far, they've produced one person, one person that that happened to, uh, in which case you would ask for a provisional ballot or should have been given a provisional ballot. One person does not overturn close to 200,000 votes. That's how that works. What? Let me do like on a graph for you. Uh, okay. Imagine that this is one, this graph right there, that amount, that represents one person. We're going to put that right here. Okay. And then over on this side, that over, it's all, it's all backwards for me. I'm sorry. I'm doing this backwards. Okay. So this guy's over here. That's, this is one person. And over here, this is 200. That we were told, I'm sorry. You Hold on. I have a poster board. I have a poster. This is one person. You've already voted by mail-in ballot. Congratulations. We received a ballot so you can no longer vote. They didn't know what to do. They had no ballot. one to complain to. Provisional Most ballot. Most just left and said, that's strange. But many people... And, and that's wrong. That is terrible that that happened to that person. If it happened to that person. Many people did vote. There was... Was it... It wasn't even a swing state. There was a case of this happening. And they actually went and got... They were able, it was a small precinct, and they were able to get the, go and get the, the envelope with the signature on it and say, is this your vote? Is this your signature? And the ladies, oh, I guess I sent it in then. Thank you so much for your time. And they walked away saying, isn't that strange? Isn't that, but that does happen. But yes, if that's the case, fine. Was it six million times? People complained and complained vehemently and in a lot of cases they filled out a provisional ballot uh robin are you just saying that that sdny is dropping indictments on the afternoon of january 20th or was there some sort of announcement which was almost never used but in virtually every case was a vote for trump what in other Hold words on. they provisional ballot but many people complained and complained vehemently and in a lot of cases, they filled out a provisional ballot, which was almost never used, but in virtually... There, there are hundreds of thousands of provisional ballots. Every case was a vote for Trump. How, who says that? Where? What? Has, he, has he told us what he's talking about? In other words, they went in to vote, and they were told that they voted. No, Robin, I'm asking, was this announced? If you've got sources, you got sources. But w was it announced? Like, was it, did the SDNY just announce something or tweet something? Oh, there's been not been an announcement. Thank you, Robin. You guys are on Twitter. You're about 20 seconds behind me. On YouTube, you're about six, sec seven seconds behind me. And they didn't vote. And okay. they left. And they felt horror. Horror. And they lost respect for our system. And this happened tens of thousands did he say system or sister because if a sister i get that both my sisters could be pretty annoying especially when i don't want to watch the brady bunch thousands of times all over the country that's how desperate the democrats were they would fill out ballots uh -huh. of people not even knowing if these people were going to show up and when they did show up that's a weird edit uh and uh so they they were out there stealing these ballots out of people's mailboxes and none of them got caught not one these thousands of democrats raiding mailboxes and not no nobody none of these people had a ring video doorbell we don't have any evidence of these thousands of people wow they said sorry you've already voted and on top of everything else oh on top we have a company 
That's very sus. Okay, so we're at 10 minutes out of 46, and he's already gotten to on top of everything else. Suspect. It's. I'm just. I'm so looking forward to where this road is leading. Name is Dominion. Yeah. With the turn of a dial, or the change of a chip, you can press a button for Trump. And the vote goes. I, I honestly feel sorry for the editor on this. It, they're doing a terrible job, but I feel sorry for them because they're probably their terrible job is probably the best they could possibly do with this. As to Biden, what kind of a system is this? We have to go to paper. Maybe it takes longer, but the only secure system is paper, not these systems. Yeah, these people have never met. Uh, never met. They've never met a Grisham novel. They really haven't. ...that nobody understands, including... What? Hold on, let's go back, because I've already lost... You can press a button for Trump. Yeah. And the vote goes... Nobody presses a button. ...goes to Biden. What kind of a system is this? We have to go to paper. Maybe it takes longer. But the only secure system is paper. Not these systems that... No uh, this is important. 95% of the ballots cast in the United States this year were on paper. And in the swing states, in any of the states in question that Trump is challenging, every single vote was cast on paper. And if Kayleigh Macaroni's watching, every single vote was casted on paper. All of them. Nobody understands, including, in many cases, the people that run them. Although, unfortunately, I think they understand them far too well. In okay. one Michigan county... So nobody, the people that run these things don't under, but they do. So there. I wanted to, I wanted to a while ago. I think in 15 I started this. I was keeping track of the, th the, the sentences where Trump just co corrected himself mid-sentence or disagreed with himself. Nobody's ever seen anything like this except for all the other times that it's happened. He does that all the time. I stopped keeping track because I was figuring, like, nobody's going to care. He has an example that used Dominion systems. They found that nearly 6,000 votes had been wrongly switched. No. From Trump to Biden. No. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. It's not the tip of the iceberg. It was one county in Michigan... And as the uh, congressperson or the senator uh, in Michigan pointed out yesterday, I'll play that for you. I won't even get into it, but there's paper, paper ballots. It was 3,000 votes, and it wasn't because the machine switched them. The machine just did what the human who put in the spreadsheet told it to do. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't a machine error. This is what we caught. How many didn't we catch? Are there hundreds of other examples throughout the country? How about millions? Are there thousands? We just got lucky, and they called it a glitch. But we found numerous glitches that evening. 96% of the company's political donations went to Democrats. Not, not true. Not surprisingly. Not true. And frankly, when you look at who's running the company, who's in charge, who owns it, which we don't know. We do. Where are the votes counted, which we think are counted in foreign countries, not in the United States. They're not. They're counted here in the United States. Dominion is a disaster. It is not. Election authorities in Texas have repeatedly blocked the deployment of Dominion systems. That's true. Due to concerns about security, vulnerabilities, and the potential for errors and outright fraud. But we have paper ballots to test every one of those machines, and they all turned out fine. Every district that... But he is correct. Texas did uh, reject them based on not only security, but complication. It's just too complicated. The manual, etc. is it's, uh, it's a lot of paper. Imagine this, but like a lot of paper. That's what the manual is. I get that from Kelly Macaroni. I just, I just hold up some paper and then everybody's going to... Yeah. All right. I get it. I can visualize that. That sure seems complicated to me, Kevin. Thank you so much for your time. That uses Dominion systems must be carefully monitored and carefully investigated. They are. But not only for the future. And audited. Right now, we're worried about the present and what went on with an election that we won without question. Under my lead, the Republicans won almost every state house 
in the United States, which they weren't expected to do. We went up to 16 seats in the House. Right. The numbers are still being tabulated. Right, but you didn't win the House. In fact, Trump lost the House. The Republicans lost the House by an average score when you compare how much the Republicans got versus how much the Democrat got when they were running against each other, by an average vote, average margin of 51% to 47%. 51 to 47 in the House. Nationally, Biden beat Trump by 51 to guess how many? 47. 51 to 47. It's exactly the same margin. There's no surprises here. Remember, the GOP lost the House again. When Trump came into office in 2016, the GOP was in control of the House. In 2018, they lost it. In 2020, they lost it again. And in 2020, in terms of the Senate, which is weird because we only elect a third of our senators at a time, and there's sometimes a special election, which is the case here, they still they don't control the Senate. We'll find out what happens in January. But these weird, impossible numbers that they're talking about, they're all exactly consistent. They are exactly as math says they should be. Because there are nine seats that nobody really knows. They don't know. They're still, two weeks later, still under consideration. Yeah. Well, they, they're being counted. it's a mess. It's not a mess. The Republicans were supposed to lose many seats, and instead they won those seats in the House. And you lost. And a very important election that's coming up will determine whether or not. Trippin says, Chris, my source is do your own research. <laughs> Although, hey, I got to say, though, Trippin, that is the correct use of your there. <laughs> Multiple dings for Trippin on that one. We hold the Senate. David Perdue and Kelly Leffler are two tremendous people. Unfortunately, in Georgia, they're using the same horrible dominion system. It was not the last time, Trip and Truth. Last time, it was you are, which needs to be conjugated. And it's already been out that... Uh, this is the alliterati. Uh, this is the Trump version of the Illuminati. So this is, they see nothing, hear nothing, and do nothing. But this right here at the tip, this is the flag... Right here, this represents the flag that goes on top of your uh, truck. And over here, that's your boat. This is your house, okay? But then, if you look at it all together, let me get closer here. You look at it all together, let me do this. Watch what happens, guys. Watch what happens, see? Put it all together. Uh, I can't do it. I can't do it without see. Okay, there. It's a clan hood. See, it all comes together. The boat parades, motorcycle parades, the, the house, the peoples, that's three different things. If you're a mega fan, all comes together. Hundreds of thousands, think of it, hundreds okay. of thousands of absentee ballots right. have been requested. Yeah. You check it out, who's requesting those ballots? Voters. The difference is it's one state and we will have our eyes on it like nobody's ever watched anything before. <laughs> like nobody's ever watched We have to win it. those two. More, like more than I watched the Super Bowl last year? What, like more than I watched my child when they skated for the first time? Like what, what is it? Will, will it be strongly? Will you be what? What state is he even talking about at this point? Are we on Georgia now? Where are we? Senate seats. The tremendous success we had in the House of Representatives. Yeah. And the tremendous success we've had. The tremendous success where you lost. The House of Representatives. You lost the House of Representatives. So far in the Senate. So far in the Senate, you've lost one seat. You're behind. The Democrats could win two more seats and you've lost the Senate completely. There is no winning going on here. Expected success all over the country and right here in Washington. It is statistically impossible that the person, me, that led the charge, lost. What does that even pulsers, mean? The real pulsers, not the ones. That what does that mean, that led the charge? You talking about the election? I just went over it in case you missed it. Uh, if you take the average 
margin between Democrats and Republicans for the House, 51 to 47, Democrat. If you take the average margin Biden-Trump, 51-47. And by average, I mean overall. That had us down 17 points in Wisconsin. But statistically impossible for leading a charge. <laughs> leading a charge is not a mathematical equation. And when we actually won, well, the ones that had us down four or five points in Florida, and we won by many points, or had us... E the, the polls mean nothing. Do we not know this by now? Even and down in Texas, uh -huh. and we won by a lot. Okay. Congratulations. Not those pollsters. Oh. But real pollsters. Oh. Pollsters like? that are fair and honest. Okay. Said we can't understand a thing like this. It's never happened before. You led the country to victory. What? And you were the only one that was lost. It's what victory? What victory did you lead to? You didn't win the Senate. You didn't win the House. Where's the victory? Not possible. The Speaker of the House of a certain state said, Sir, I expected to lose my seat. And instead, because of you. It's a fake story. He started it with Sir. And because of that incredible charge and all of those rallies, we had a tremendous victory. And everybody knows it. You were much more popular than me, sir. Except I got many more votes than you did. And it's impossible that that happened. It's not impossible. You're that bad. You're that pathetic. There is something wrong. I'll tell you what's wrong. Voter fraud. Here's an example. Th that, that is wrong. They're, that, that, that voter fraud is what's wrong. So it's wrong that the voter fraud is wrong. He's pretty. This is Michigan. Oh, yeah. At 631 in the morning. Uh-huh. A vote dump. Yes. Of 149,772. There you go, David. Votes came in unexpectedly. No. That's, we were winning. that's not unexpected at all. That's exactly how things happen. When they're done with a certain count, they send them in. You're calling it a dump. By a lot. President Trump over here was received. Yeah. In horror. What? Nobody <laughs> knows anything about it. <laughs> By the way, there's the. They, they got the numbers. The people working at the election got the numbers from Detroit or wherever it is that these numbers are coming in from. But can't tell because he can't read the chart because he's holding a poster board under. Show, show us. Show, by the way, we could find this. This is all over the internet, um, but we're not even going to bother. Uh, so they, the people at the election boards got it, and they looked at these numbers in horror. Horror. Oh, oh the humanity. Line. This is one of many. Here's what is normal. And all of a sudden, look at that. This is normal. That's the big city. See the counties and the big cities. Uh this is, uh, can you believe people are stupid enough to believe this? Let's pull him over here. So let's watch his little finger here. Look how tiny his hand is. Are you guys seeing this? Look how tiny that hand is. It's insane. I'm, I'm amazed he can even hold up the board. This board, by the way, is a four by six index card. That's how tiny his hands are. That's his signature. Normal, look, even here. Normal. Yeah, look at those tiny bones. little stubs. All of a sudden, uh -huh. I go from winning by a lot yeah. To losing a t I wish that he put makeup on his hands because then we could make baby carrot jokes. Baby carrot do 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 baby carrot do do tight race. It's corrupt. Detroit is corrupt. I have a lot of friends in Detroit. They know it. <laughs> but Detroit is totally corrupt. Uh -huh. Look at D this. Detroit. Look at this. Yeah, so that's Wayne County, Michigan. That's that's exactly what you expect. Why? Because that's where the bulk of the population is. That's at 631. He could fix all of this with a Sharpie. Why hasn't he realized this, Nicole? One in the morning. Yeah. Unexpectedly came in. No, not expected. In the recent Unexpected. recount. Th that's exactly when they thought it would happen. In Georgia, which means nothing because they don't want to check signatures. What? And if you're not going to check, it came in. In the recent recount in Georgia, which means nothing because they don't want to check signatures. Okay, so I've explained this before. I did a, a Shut the Fact Up video on it. You can find it on YouTube. Very quickly, when a ballot comes in, it's inside an envelope. 
You sign the outside of the envelope. The ballot does not have your signature in it. So what they do is they take your ballot out. First, they, they confirm your signature in Georgia. What they do is they confirm it against uh, one, two, or three other signatures, depending on how many signatures on file that they have for you, including your driver's license, your voter ID card, etc. It's not a voter ID. Well, it is. It's your voter roll card, but you know what I'm saying. So uh, they take out your ballot. That's a secret. Nobody can ever look at that and say, huh, who did Kevin vote for? Oh, well, we're going we're gonna to retaliate against your vote is a secret. That's how votes work in the United States. This goes over there. The ballot itself with the signature, that is now separated. The two cannot be linked anymore. To count these or try and match signatures again for the third time, it's useless. It's not going to tell you which ballots are or are not real. Now, the ballots are all barcoded. There's sequences to them. You can't just print out your own ballot. There's a computer sequence that tells the ballot what it has on it so that the counting machines know that it's valid. And if you're not going to check signatures in Georgia... Yeah, any, any ballot that went through the machine is a real ballot. That's... I wanted to make sure that uh, uh, Mari caught me on that, uh, that. But yes, she's absolutely correct. It doesn't work, but we have a secretary of state and a governor who made it very difficult to check signatures. Why? You'll have to ask them. I just explained it to you, but you're attacking your own party there, bud. Way to stab them in the back, brute. But without a signature match or check, it doesn't matter. They found thousands and thousands of votes that were out of whack. What? All against me. What? This was during a recount. What does that mean? That I didn't even think mattered. They found many thousands of votes. And that recount didn't. That were out of whack? Matter. The one that matters is the one that's going on now. Oh. That because of the fact it's so close, they had to, by law, give another recount. But the recount has to be a recount where they check the signatures. Otherwise, they're just checking the same dishonest thing. No, it won't the, matter. The signatures are, they're not together. The signatures don't mean anything anymore. They've been verified. Signatures are done. And more than two thirds of the country doesn't even throw a ballot out because of a mismatched signature. In this case, the signatures on envelopes are the only thing that is relevant. No, they're not relevant at all. We will compare the signature on the envelope to the signatures from past elections, and we will find that many thousands of people signed these ballots illegally. The Democrats this had this election. And, and you can contact those people and they'll say, no, I, no, I voted. Thank you. Election rigged right from the beginning. They use the pandemic, sometimes referred to as the China virus. Is this just a replay of what is this just Three 17-minute segments? Is that what we're watching? Where it originated. As an excuse to mail out tens of millions of ballots, which ultimately led... Or, or to save lives, because some of us care about more than a quarter million dead Americans. I know you don't, but some of us do. ...to a big part of the fraud, a fraud that the whole world is watching. And there is no one happier right now than China. Many people received two, three, and four ballots. They were sent to dead people by the thousands. In fact, dead people, and we have many examples, filled out ballots, made applications. They, they did not. And then voted, which is even worse. In other words, dead people went through a process. Some have been dead for 25 years. Yeah, that process is called decomposition. Millions of votes were cast illegally in the swing states alone. And if that's the case, the results of the individual swing states must be overturned and overturned immediately. Some people say that's too far out. That's too harsh. Well, does that... Well, who says that's too far out? Too far out, man. I mean, we... Did he just watch, like, the trial of Chicago 7 last night? Is that why he's talking like this? Take... A president, and we've just elected. Hi, a Billy. I'm the stupid ass with, with the hat. It. My name's Kevin. This is my channel. You're watching my channel. If you don't want me interrupting and fact checking, 
Don't watch my channel. Votes were fraudulent? No, it means you have to turn over the election. And everybody knows, without going much further, Billy, if you want to watch Trump, just go watch the Trump Facebook. This is on Facebook. You're on Facebook, Billy. Go to go to Donald J. Just search Donald J. Trump on Facebook, and you'll see that. Oh, there it is, folks. There it is. Look, Billy doesn't know how your is spelled. No Trump supporter knows how your is spelled. It's always that way. Billy, your is you are. It's two words. You put them together. You got to use the sky comma, the apostrophe. I don't know if you know what that's called, but the comma that goes up there, that's the sky comma. <laughs> Fuck you, stupid ass, says K Thomas. K actually, uh, maybe with a finger and only a certain, like I have to be in the mood. But uh, thank you. Uh, yes, and all you Democrats, I'm not a Democrat, so right there. Learn how to spell, Billy, and come back. Uh, you can go watch Trump on his own page. It's up. Uh, search Facebook for Donald J. Trump, and then you'll be able to do that. Skip back to the actual Trump, and the guy with the stupid-ass hat will continue to interrupt. Further, And they've seen the evidence, but they don't want to talk about it. What a disaster this election was. A total catastrophe. But we're going to show it, and hopefully the courts in particular... The Supreme Court of the United States will see it. I wonder if he thinks that the, hope. that the Supreme Court is actually, boy, he's pretty. Uh, if the Supreme Court of the United States, if a, if a justice is there on the Supreme Court right now watching this and thinking, well, well I didn't, I wasn't considering it until right now. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hear this case that has no merits and is moot. I wonder if that's what he actually believes is going to happen. Hopefully they will do what's right for our country, because our country cannot live with this kind of an election. We could say, let's go on to the next one. But no, we have to look also at our past. Yes, Lizzie. We can't let this happen. Maybe you'll have a revote, but I don't think that's appropriate. When those votes are corrupt, when they're irregular, when they get caught, they're terminated. And I've When the votes get caught? very easily win in all states i very his he's very orange but his fingers his little tiny stubby fingers they're very white easily win these swing states just like i won them at 10 o'clock in the evening the evening of the what? election so we're not looking to show you 25 faulty or fraudulent votes which don't mean anything because it doesn't overturn the state or 50 or 100. we're showing you hundreds of thousands far more than we need far more than the margin far more than the law requires we can show many times <laughs> he's what telling is necessary his story to win the state the media knows this but they don't want to report it in fact they outright refuse to even cover it because they know the result if they do even what i'm saying now will be demeaned and disparaged. Right now, that's in okay. real time. I just keep on going forward because I'm representing 74 million people. And in fact, I'm also representing all of the people that didn't vote for me. The mail-in voting scam is the latest part of their four-year effort to overturn the results of the 20... Uh, this isn't live, no. He uh, Well, this is live. If you're watching right now, this is uh, uh, live. Uh, I'm live. But uh, this is a recorded video by Trump. This is obviously multiple takes. There's weird edits in here. But this was recorded earlier by Trump. But his tie has changed four times. 2016 election. And it's been like living in hell. Our opponents have proven many times, again and again, yeah. that they will say and do anything to get back into power. The corrupt forces who are registering dead voters and stuffing ballot boxes are the same people who have perpetrated one phony and fraudulent hoax after another. Okay. You've been watching it now for four years. These entrenched interests oppose our movement because we put America first. They don't put America first. Uh, this is just a rally. This is just his rally uh, rhetoric.
it's literally word for word, they just taken portion of the rally and popped it in there and he's reading it from the teleprompter. Not well. And we're returning power to you, the American people. Right. Socialism. They don't want America first. They Socialism. only want power for themselves. Yeah. They want to make money. That's why they don't want me as your president. I've been investigated from soon after I announced. I, I make money when you're president, so I'm fine with it. I was running for president. Yeah. When I immediately went to number one in the Republican primary polls, the investigations never stopped. They went on for four years. And I won them all. I beat them all. Russia, Russia, Russia. You won the investigations? The impeachment hoax and so much more. Okay. Robert Mueller spent $48 million of taxpayer He didn't. Their money investigating me for two and a half years, issued over 2,800 subpoenas, executed nearly 500 search warrants, issued 230 orders for communications records, and conducted 500 witness interviews, all looking to take me down. There was no collusion in the end. No, there was None lots of collusion. whatsoever. There was lots of collusion. There was no provable conspiracy, which is a crime. Collusion is not a crime. Conspiracy is a crime. There was no provable conspiracy that they could find because Trump campaign members, A, deleted emails, irony, uh, B, used encrypted software and wouldn't give up the encryption codes, and C, pled the fifth. I know it's pleaded the fifth, but you know what? I'm old fashioned. Uh, so anyway, yeah, there was lots and lots and lots of collusion. Senator Marco Rubio, the head of the Senate Intelligence Committee. Stated That's ironic. The committee found no evidence that then candidate Donald Trump or his campaign colluded with the Russian government. That is absolutely, that's what Marco Rubio said, but that is not what the committee actually found. I'll pull that up for us. And I thank Senator Rubio for that statement. Now I hear that these same people that failed to get me in Washington have sent every piece of information to New York so that they can try to get me there. It's all been gone over. Oh, oh, oh the SDNY? He knows. He knows. This is the actual findings from the Senate Intel Committee. This is their the findings from the Intel Committee itself. Let me zoom it in so we can see it. Okay. It is our conclusion. This is the Senate Intel Committee of which the Republicans are in charge. It is our conclusion, based on the facts detailed in the committee's report, that the Russian intelligence service's assault on the integrity of the 2016 U.S. electoral process and Trump, not his campaign, Trump himself, and his associates' participation, multiple associates' participation in and enabling of this Russian activity, represents one of the single most grave counterintelligence threats to American national security in the modern era. That's Republicans saying that. One of the most grave counterintelligence threats to American national security in the modern era. Don't tell me no collusion. Pretty. Over and over again. For $48 million, you go through tax returns, you go through everything. The New York Attorney General, who recently ran for office, campaigned without knowing me, stating, we will join with law enforcement and other attorneys general across this nation in removing this president from office. Yeah. I never met her. It's important that every- You don't have to meet a criminal. I just, I was gonna arrest the rapist, but I never met the guy, so yeah, I let him go. What am I to say? Everybody understands, she said, that the days of Donald Trump are coming to an end. Yeah. And all it's been is a big investigation. She did meet his son, Eric. That is true. In Washington and New York and any place else that can investigate. Because that's... Any place else. Dubuque? Is that also? Because that is a place that can investigate. What they want to do. Uh -huh. They want to take... Is he going to tell us about his friend who says he's the most honest person ever? Like not me, but us. Oh, yeah. us. Oh. And we can never let them do that. Me too? Everything's been looked at. A friend of mine who's very smart said, you've probably 
seen more than anybody else. Uh -huh. You've probably been investigated more than anybody else. Are the most honest person? For you ever? to come out with yeah. a clean bill of health makes you probably the cleanest person in this country. Uh -huh. Some people. You know what? They've been investigating Hillary for 40 years, so she's got some length on you there, buddy. People in this administration, but fortunately not all, have been beaten down and disparaged. They just disappeared. Nobody knows what happened to them. Why aren't what? they active? Why what? aren't they involved? There's so much to be involved in. The what is he talking about now? Corruption is so rampant. They just couldn't take it anymore. They were threatened by Democrats with impeachment, and horrible things were said about them, and they're good people. Even recently, the head of the GSA was hounded and harassed, as she reported, like she has never been before. What? What oh. can I say? OK. We caught Comey cold. We caught McCabe cold. We caught them all. And they're all We're in jail. Waiting for they're all on trial and in jail. A report from a man named Durham, right. who I have never spoken to and I have never met. Uh huh. They can go after me before the election as much as they want. Oh, good. But unfortunately, Mr. Durham didn't want to go after these people or have anything to do with going after them before the election. So who knows if he is ever going to even do a report. But if you look at the lies and the leaks and the illegal acts and behavior done by so many people in their desire to hurt the president of the United States. Was there a point to the whole Durham thing? He said, I don't know. I never met the guy. And he might do something. And he might not. And he didn't do anything before the election. And he might do something after. But he might not. And it's just good. And he might be wearing a yellow sweater today. I don't know if he wears a sweater. Some people don't like sweaters. Other people like vests. I don't know. I never met the guy. Well, that was uh, two minutes. We will never get back. United States. Something should happen. The hardest thing I have to do is explain why nothing is happening with all of these people that got caught spying on my campaign. It's never happened before, and it should never happen again yeah. to a president of the United States. It's not hard to explain when you put it into the parameters of it never happened. So there's that. A lot easier that way. Glad I could help. It's all you have to do is watch the hearings and see for yourself. Oh, we the do. The evidence is overwhelming. Yeah. The fraud that we've collected in recent weeks. Hi, Sven. Hi from Germany. I wonder if he'll ask you guys, Volt ihr den totalen Krieg? I don't know. Did I get that right, Andy? Andy, if you're in the room, talk to Sven. Is overwhelming having to do with our election. Everyone is saying, wow, the evidence is overwhelming when they get wow. to see it. I am saying, wow, I would love to see any evidence. I would, oh, uh, OAN is showing this live, by the way. They're showing all 46 minutes of this live. But really, it's too late to change now the we have election, election. day. It's too late to change the outcome. In fact, there is still plenty of time to certify the correct winner of the election. And that's what we're fighting to do. But no matter when it happens, when they see fraud, when they see false votes, and when those votes... Uh, Ted, if there's evidence, we would, we, we're all waiting to see the evidence. And in court, Rudy keeps saying that there is no evidence. They're not making any allegations in court. They're not showing any evidence in court. They're just... And all of this evidence that's happening in these hearings in Michigan, Arizona, Pennsylvania, none of it is actual voter fraud. There is no actual hard evidence. Just somebody saying, I saw a truck that was too big to have food on it. Or too small. But yeah, if you've got some evidence, let us know. Well, I'll be happy to examine it. I, I take deep dives into that kind of stuff. But so far, nothing. We do know about one daughter who talked about her mother showing up and not being able to vote. Number far more than is necessary. Ted, any evidence, any evidence whatsoever would be, would be appreciated. You can't let another person steal that election from you. All over the country,
People are together in whole. Thank you for reminding me, David. We did see an Asian guy handling ballots, and the machines have chips from China in them. So right there, that's pretty much Trump wins. <laughs> Judges agree. Holding up signs, stop the steal. To understand how we will challenge this fraud, it is important to know the problems with mail-in balloting. Pennsylvania, Michigan, Nevada, Georgia, Arizona, and most other states allowed anyone to get an absentee ballot and cast their vote without showing any ID. The uh, yeah. Voter ID, that's a completely different issue, but we managed to have elections, and last time we had elections with the same amount of no voter ID laws, guess what? Trump won. So do we need to go back and over? I would love to. Can somebody build a time machine? Uh, speaking of um, uh, whether or not there's actually any fraud, for those of you watching who keep insisting that there's all this evidence, somebody ought to tell Rudy. This is Rudy Giuliani in a courtroom in Pennsylvania. The judge is asking him, how do you want us to treat this? very strictly and he says no i want you to treat, treat it normally which doesn't make it's not a thing then continues to answer the question there is this is not a fraud case this is not a fraud case and you're thinking like oh no rudy would never say that he says this is not a fraud case rudy giuliani should i apply in this case on a motion to dismiss well so st what st strict Sorry, what what uh, method of review is what the answer uh, judge is asking? Uh, should it should it be strict, or should it be intermediate? Should it be? It's do I apply the Constitution here? A strict uh, interpretation of the Constitution in terms of the dismissal on this one, or do I? So this is the question, and Rudy answers on the motion to dismiss. Well, I think a normal one, which doesn't make any sense. That's not a that's not a legal term. I'm not even a lawyer. I don't even watch Law and Order, but I know that. And then he asked him about the fraud. Oh, I mean, I think the normal one. Are you arguing then that strict scrutiny should apply here? No, the normal scrutiny should apply. If 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 we had alleged fraud, yes, but this is not a this is not a, a fraud case. They not only don't have alleged fraud, but it's not even a fraud case. That's what's happening in the courts where Rudy can't lie or he gets in trouble. Strict scrutiny, normal scrutiny, intermediate scrutiny. It's, it's I, go go look it up or something because I, I don't even want to get into it. It's all it's all not. He he has no idea. The other day, I don't have this on tape. I heard it. I think on NPR, wherever it was. Uh, before that, in the previous case, Rudy was arguing. He said something about the judge. He says uh, it's not. It doesn't have a lot of opacity, which is uh, I guess means you're able to see through it. And the judge says, well, no, that's the opposite of what it means. That would be transparency. The voting took place entirely on the honor system. No identification. Melissa says for non-lawyers, there's no such standards as normal scrutiny. That's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Education of any kind was required. Most Americans uh, would also be shocked to learn. Uh, that's not true. Uh, David, a venti scrutiny is actually, and people don't know this, venti means 30 that no state in the country verifies United States citizenship as a condition for voting in federal elections. This is a national disgrace. No other advanced country conducts elections this way. Many European countries have instituted major restrictions on mail-in voting specifically because they recognize the nearly unlimited potential for fraud. I don't Out of know. 42 European nations, all but two prohibit absentee ballots entirely. Uh, uh, Zat Roar 45? I'm not a Dem. Not a Democrat. Didn't vote for Hillary. Entirely for people who reside inside the country, or else they require those who need absentee ballots to show a very, very powerful ID. Throughout the Democrat effort to dram Democratic. dramatically expand mail in voting. The Democrat Party leaders were also feverishly working to block measures designed to protect against fraud, such as signature verification, residency verification, or voter ID. And citizenship confirmation was almost unthought of that we should ask for it. Can you believe it? Uh, the GGG is asking, just saying, what if there's a fraud in the election? If there's a fraud? 
that that's Trump. I, I, I'm, I, are you asking what if it turns out that there is overwhelming fraud in the election? Well, it, there's not. We know what there isn't because we've already done several recounts that the paper matched the machines. All of this is nonsense. Will I ever respect Trump? No. Of course not. He just he's he lies to us repeatedly. This ain't remember before the election. If Biden wins, stock market's gonna take it. We're gonna see the deepest recession. We've ever the biggest depression since the Great Depression. Stock market's hitting records. He's wrong about everything. When he came into office, Obama gave him 3% GDP. He said, we're, uh, we're going to hit four, five, possibly six. I don't see any reason why we couldn't go higher than that. You know what it was before uh, COVID got here? 2.3%. He said four, five, six percent, 2.3%. He's, he lies about everything. And he, he, he sells you this rosy picture, but what's making the picture rosy is blood. Stop being lied. Don't accept being lied to anymore. You don't know me. Fact check me. Whatever I'm saying, for example, if I say that venti means 30, fact check that. Judges, it does. It does mean 30. Look it up. If this... These are not the actions of people who want fair elections. These are the actions of people who want to steal elections, who are willing to create fraud. The only conceivable reason why you would block common sense measures to verify legal eligibility for voting is you are trying. Guys, Venti clearly means 30. The judges have dinged. Again, they agree with me. Trying to encourage, enable, solicit. Thank you, German. German is now my favorite supporter. Or carry out fraud. It is important for Americans to understand that these destructive changes to our election laws were not a necessary. This is like 18 cuts now. They just keep cutting this. <laughs> response to the pandemic. The pandemic simply gave the Democrats an excuse to do what they have been trying to do for many, many years. In fact, the very first bill that House Democrats introduced when Nancy Pelosi became Speaker was an attempt to mandate universal mail-in voting and eliminate measures such as voter ID, which is so necessary. Dramatically eroding the integrity of our elections was the Democrats' number one priority for a simple reason. They wanted to steal the 2020 presidential election. All of the Democrat efforts to expand mail-in balloting. Guys, I know, I know it's 20. I know Aventi is 20. I ask for a medium. Can I just get a medium, please? Would you like Aventi? Laid the groundwork. I, I got into an argument once, in a, and it wasn't a Starbucks. It was an off place. But the guy, I just like... Well, well, uh, well, how many ounces is that? Well, this is 16. Okay, and that's what? That's 20? That's a venti. Okay, so it's 20. I'll just take the 20 ounce. Well, it's a venti. Right. Can I get that one, please? The 20 ounce cup. Well, we call it a venti. Call it whatever you like. I would please like that cup filled with coffee. Well, you have to order a venti. I think I, I, think I left for the systematic and pervasive no i didn't i was with somebody and they were like i'm gonna get a coffee anyway i i'm i'm gonna get a six day to six yes yeah fraud that occurred in this election in pennsylvania large amounts of mail-in and absentee ballots were processed illegally and in secret in philadelphia and allegheny counties no. Without our observers present. Not true. They were not allowed to. We've covered this. Trump's lawyers even admitted in court that there was a non-zero. That's the word they use. Non-zero number of uh, observers. Be present. In fact, they weren't even allowed in the same room. They were thrown out of the building and they looked from outside in, but they had no way of even seeing because there were no windows and the windows that were there. <laughs> were... <laughs> so, so. They looked from outside in, but they had no way of seeing because there were no windows. But the windows, when they were there, what? Doesn't, isn't somebody in the room with this man right now going, sir, sir, you're not, 
This is, I, I, I don't even, I haven't even heard what's coming next, but he's about to say, he's about to describe the windows that weren't there, that they were so tiny because of the Green New Deal that no one is allowed to have windows anymore and you can't see the cows outside because cows don't exist, so there's nothing to see anyway. So therefore, we don't need... ...boarded up in this election. Yeah. In Pennsylvania, large amounts of mail-in and absentee ballots were processed illegally ah. and in secret in Philadelphia and Allegheny counties without our observers present. They were not allowed to be present. In fact, they weren't even allowed in the same room. They were thrown out of the building, and they looked from outside in, but they had no way of even seeing because there were no windows, and the windows that were there were boarded up. Democrats even went... There were no windows and no doors. Name that reference. Went to the Pennsylvania Supreme Court to block observers from receiving access. There is only one possible reason that... No, that's not true. ...that the corrupt Democrat political machine would oppose transparency during the vote counting. It's because they know they are hiding illegal activity. It's very simple. This is an egregious and excuse. Uh, here, here's the problem, is that in the room counting, there are Democrats and Republicans. So, okay. ...and irreversible harm that stains the entire election, yet this unprecedented practice Corrupt. of excluding our observers, our vote watchers, as some people call them, occurred in Democrat-run cities in key states all across the nation. Here are just some of the additional facts that we've uncovered. Many voters all oh, across good. Pennsylvania received two ballots in the mail, and many others received mail-in ballots for which they never applied. So well, mail-in ballots with those, for which many they, they never got applied. ballots. They didn't even so know. Well, if they vote with those, which many, they they never suddenly we got feedback loop here. I think I fixed it. Uh, if they voted with those ballots, then they committed vote fraud. And uh, that's five years. But they were four. And again, so many received more than one ballot, in some cases, more than two ballots. And they happen to be, for the most part, Democrats. In Fayette County. How, how do we know that? Did they report that they had voted multiple times? Because not a single person has come forward claiming that. County Pennsylvania, multiple voters received ballots that I'm, were already filled. I did vote for Joe Biden, and I voted one time per state. I'm not an idiot. Filled out. They didn't know what happened. In Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, a poll Again, another weird cut. poll watcher overheard unregistered voters being told to return later to try to vote under a different name. Tens of thousands of voters across Pennsylvania were treated differently based on whether they were Republican. If, if you did that, you would have to have... Uh, you would have to have a, a provisional ballot. If it was a state where you could register on that day, you, you would have to have a provisional ballot, and the provisional bat ballot would be compared to the voter rolls, and you would not be allowed to vote. That's, th that's how that would work. Republicans or Democrats? Voters who submitted flawed ballots and some Democrats... Uh, M. Petrillo says, or it could be Petrillo, excuse me, I received about five applications for a mail-in ballot. I only received one real ballot and sent it in by mail after I applied for it. And I think that's North Carolina. Yeah, that's right. You, you receive, no matter how many ballots you receive, by the way, Twitter was full of people posting multiple, they were applications, they weren't actual ballots. The precincts were notified and asked to fix their ballots while Republican precincts, and in particular, Republican voters, were not so notified, which plainly violates the equal protection. What does that even mean, not so notified? Protection clause of the United States Constitution. If you are a Democrat, we're going to fix up your ballot, make sure it's perfect. If you are a Republican, don't even talk about it. In Michigan, yeah. a career employee. But that's on the Republicans. It's the local party that has to notify the voters to cure their ballots. And in the Republican counties, the Republicans just weren't, weren't doing their jobs. So that's really on them. Employee of the city of Detroit witnessed city workers coaching voters to vote straight Democrat while accompanying them to watch who they were voting for, violating the law 
and the sanctity of the secret ballot. You can't do that. Oh, oh, now he understands how secret ballots work. The same worker says she was instructed not to ask for any ID and not to attempt to validate any signatures. She was also told to illegally backdate ballots, many, many ballots, received after the deadline. This Has anyone seen? I didn't watch all the hearings yesterday. Has anyone seen one person who all of these things? Like, why would she be at the polling place checking ID and also backdating ballots? Who is this incredible one woman who does all the jobs and works for the post office? What the hell is he talking about? This is something that is so unconstitutional. And she estimates that thousands and thousands of ballots were improperly backdated by her and many others. Other witnesses in Detroit also saw election officials counting. Uh, so, uh, John Oliver, uh, there was someone who claimed that they were told to backdate envelopes, uh, uh, postmarks. And um, when, when the John Oliver's people actually looked, it wasn't John Oliver's people, but I saw it on John Oliver. When it was investigated, okay, well, how many, how many ballots would that have been? Only two ballots came out of that particular post office that day. So at, at very max, two ballots. In batches of the same ballots many times, as well as illegally duplicating ballots. Uh, you're, you're supposed to scan the, if the batch doesn't work in a Dominion machine, you're supposed to scan the batch again, and then it'll, it, to help get through all the ballots, and then it's accepted. But you, you do scan them multiple times. We did watch Melissa, Melissa the blonde with the big hair. Uh, we watched her in deposition explaining that that's how it worked. One observer testified to seeing boxes and boxes of ballots all bearing the same signature. Another observer in Detroit gave sworn testimony. Yeah, and no one's been able to find those ballots. Even in the recounts, they didn't show up. So, all right. That he saw countless invalid ballots that did not belong to properly registered voters and then witnessed election workers in Wayne County entering fake birth dates into the system in order to illegally count them. No, not illegally count them. You're not disqualified if your birth date isn't on the envelope. Now, the system is going to ask for it to, in order to count the vote. So what they are told to do in Michigan and in many other states as well is to put in the birth date of January 1st, uh, 1900. Because no one is that old in the United States. January 1st, 1900, put it in there just so the system will process it. But it's not a qualification for a vote. It doesn't matter if you're 30 years old or 70 year olds or whatever. As long as you're registered to vote, they might not have your birth date. So if the birth date is missing, you put that birth date in. That's part of the system. That is not voter fraud. Witnesses have signed sworn affidavits. In other words, you go to jail if you lie testifying that that is that is not true that unless the affidavits are actually submitted as evidence in court completely not true after election otherwise people would be carrying affidavits around with them all the time yeah i think the cowboys are the best team in the nfl okay are you willing to sign an affidavit on that god damn right i am election official you're going to jail buddy cowboys lost the nfc championship officials announced the last absentee votes had been received a batch of tens of thousands of ballots arrived, many without envelopes, all voting for Democrats. In Wisconsin, a record number of voters were categorized as indefinitely confined, a status reserved for severely disabled individuals, also for the elderly that allow them to vote without showing ID. Last year, approximately 70,000 people. Uh, so the deal behind that is indefinitely confined. Uh, what happened in Wisconsin, if I remember correctly, I can't remember if this was Wisconsin or another state, uh, but basically they said, yeah, if you, if, if you want to vote absentee, we don't have universal or what's called no excuse absentee ballots, uh, which is what Pennsylvania has now. This is the first time they had absentee ballots, which is why uh, this no excuse absentee ballots. In other words, Usually you need some sort of excuse, like I'm too sick to leave the House. As of last year, the Republicans in Pennsylvania voted in no excuse absentee ballot. So you don't need an excuse. You can just ask for an absentee ballot. 
They didn't have universal absentee ballots, which you just sent out to everybody. But anyway, that increased the ballot total. Um, what happened in Wisconsin is people who didn't want to vote because of COVID just used the other term, which they were told to do. That's fine. That's not illegal. And it's not reserved for people who are infirmed. It was They were told to do that in order to vote absentee instead of having to go to the vote polls during a pandemic, which was a very, very good idea. Claimed this status statewide. This year, the number miraculously was nearly 250,000 voters. Yeah. After election officials in Milwaukee and Dane counties, a couple of the most corrupt political places in our country, yeah. urged citizens to improperly register under this status. Uh huh. And register they did. And register in they did. levels that don't exist. Yeah. In Wisconsin. Okay, so I'm, I guess I just, he just fact checked me, and I'm correct. Thank you. And there are approximately 70,000. Thank you, Andy. Andy sent in a super chat. Uh, we're live right now, Liberty. Thousand absentee ballots that do not have matching ballot applications as required by law. Uh, two euros and 29 cents. That's, that, that is venti dollars. Thank you very much, Andy. I can't, my bell is stuck. I was going to give you multiple dings, but no, it's sticking. My bell is sticking. That's a euphemism, Chris. In Georgia, nine observers have testified to seeing countless irregular ballots without the creases or typical markings indicating that the ballots did not arrive in envelopes as required. A poll watcher in Fulton County estimated that approximately 98% of the large number of unusually pristine ballots that she witnessed were for Biden. A highly unusual number. In addition, Thousands of uncounted ballots were discovered in Floyd, Fayette, and Walton counties weeks after the election. And these ballots were mostly from Trump voters. They weren't counted. They were from Trump voters. In Detroit, everybody saw the tremendous conflict and the horrible way Hara. that the two Republican canvassers were treated so horribly because they wouldn't vote when they saw that 71% of the precincts didn't balance. And also, there were more votes than there were voters. Think of that. You had more votes than you had voters. That's an easy one to figure. And it actually is. It's very easy to figure. By the thousands. In Arizona, in-person no, voters whose ballot. Not the thousands. I, I, I don't even want to bother explaining that one. Was produced error messages from tabulation machines were told to press a button that resulted in their votes not being counted. Also in Arizona, the Attorney General announced that mail-in ballots had been stolen from mailboxes and hidden under a rock. In Clark County, Nevada, where most of the state's voters... Uh, the GGG says, what are you guys rushing for? Are you guys want a president that... Oh, he's gone now. Okay, nobody's rushing. I mean, we, we have deadlines. We got the Safe Harbor Day on the eighth, and then we have the Electoral College on the fourteenth. That's no one's no one's rushing anything. But I mean, the math is already done. Reside. The standards for matching a signature. Uh, are you guys want a president that you like or a legal president? I can have both. You're using the. Goldie says, I have an idea. When he's out of office, let him have a 24-hour channel on him complaining behind a podium about how life is unfair. I think that's, that already exists. It's OEN. They're showing this right now. They'll probably show it multiple times today. The entire 46 minutes. Signature verification. Yeah, but he's going he's, to end up taking a deal with Newsmax or something. Verification machine were intentionally lowered to allow large numbers of ballots to be counted that otherwise would never have passed muster. This machine was set at the lowest level. According to one report, in order to test the process, nine voters in Clark County cast ballots with intentionally incorrect signatures, and eight of the nine ballots were accepted and counted. They said you could sign your name as Santa Claus, and it would be accepted. Last week, the Clark County Commission threw out the results of a local election. Uh, Ted, you can't just throw out a stat like that. He says more people are working today than five to eight years ago. First off, no, that there's a whole bunch of unemployed people right now because 
we're in a recession due to COVID. So, but yeah, more and more people will continue to work because the population keeps growing. That's how the world works, unless you're in Japan. But everywhere else, more people work all the time. Every year, there's going to be more people working. Uh, unless your president fails to test in February, and then we suffer a 32% contraction. Then you're, you're going to be in trouble. After the registrar reported finding, quote, discrepancies that we can't explain. Also in Nevada, some voters were entered into a raffle for more than a dozen gift cards worth as much as $250 if they could prove they had voted. This took place on Indian reservations. Uh, yeah, that may in fact be true. I don't know. I, I've, I've only found one source for it, and I don't know that uh, that, that that's true. Uh, and I, I it, it'd be illegal-ish, I guess. I, I don't know that that flipped Nevada, is what I'm saying. Like, that's bad. Don't do that. Don't give people some sort of reward for voting. Although, how much is a sticker worth, right? Like, I, I don't know. It's a gift card. Did they give them gift card just for showing up at the polls? Did they give them the gift card only if they voted for a certain candidate? You can't do that. That's definitely legal. But I don't know. Uh, no, Trump failed. Dropped the ball completely. Uh, the CDC had a contaminated test. Uh, we refused to use the World Health Organization test. Uh, our testing at the end of February was only about 5,000 tests. South Korea had done 200,000 tests. We had done 5,000 tests. We have 6.6 .6 times the population of South Korea. We should have already have done more than a million tests, and we didn't. And that is when the virus germinated. One of the most- If we had tested in New York, we would have known what was going to happen because the virus came from Europe into New York and was seeding and spreading in New York, and people had no idea because we weren't testing. We still aren't testing enough. Not anywhere close. Significant indications of widespread fraud is the extraordinarily low rejection rates for mail-in ballots in many key states. These are the states that I had to win. In swing state after... T tell me Pennsylvania. Swing state. The number of ballots rejected has been dramatically lower than what would have been expected based on prior experience. That means years and years of voting. Yeah, please... Please tell me Pennsylvania. Please say Pennsylvania. In Georgia, just 2%. Georgia. That's substantially less based on prior experience. Did he just say Georgia? That means years and years of voting. In Georgia, just point lower than In what Georgia. would have been expected based on prior experience. That means years and years of voting. In Georgia, just 0.2%. That's substantially less than 1% of mail-in ballots have been rejected. In other words, almost none have been rejected. No, that's not true. 0.15% of ballots have been rejected. Guess how many were rejected in Georgia in uh, 2018, the last election? 0.15%. It's exactly the same. 0.15%. He's speaking nonsense. Rejected. They took everything. That's, that's even lower than what he's at saying. But that's how often ballots are rejected in Georgia, mail-in ballots. Nothing was rejected. And they received, of course, multiple times more ballots in Georgia uh, than in 2018 because that was a primary and because now we have COVID. So a lot of people chose to vote absentee. Rejected practically compared to 6.4% in 2016. And there are those that think that 6.4% there, there's no 6.4% rejection rate in Georgia in 2016. That's a complete fabrication. Was a low number. So think of it, almost... Really? There's people who think that rejecting 6% of ballots was a low number? He's so pretty. None were rejected. And the previous election, 6.4% were rejected. This previous election was 2018. We have seen similar declines in Pennsylvania, Nevada, and Michigan. Oh, I'm glad you said Pennsylvania. We had a tremendous decline in Pennsylvania because in Pennsylvania, they decided that they no longer have to have a signature verification match. Just like 38% of the country. Michigan ballots 
weren't rejected, especially if they happen to be in Democrat areas. These irregularities. Oh, especially, especially. They weren't rejected for signature anywhere. Parties are inexplicable unless. I just explained them, sweetie. There is a deliberate effort to accept ineligible. Uh, yeah, Ted, uh, I'm glad you brought up manufacturing. Um, uh, manufacturing was in contraction before COVID. Trump threw manufacturing in this country into contraction. Don't believe me. Look it up yourself. The stats are out there. BLS.gov. Go to manufacturing. Look up manufacturing jobs. Manufacturing, the actual output from manufacturers and jobs themselves were on the way down under Trump before COVID. Before COVID. Why? Because he was putting on those stupid tariffs and not handling the tariffs well. So yeah, we were in a manufacturing contraction under Trump before COVID. You can check that out yourself. Ballots or fraudulent. Go back to November, December, January of 2019-20. Ballots. In Pennsylvania, the Secretary of State and the State Supreme Court, in essence, abolished signature verification requirements just weeks prior to the election. Didn't I just say that? So he just said it's inexplicable, and now he's explaining it. In violation of state law, you're not allowed to do that. It has yeah, it's not in violation of state law. It has to be approved by the... It was, it was interpretation of state law. Ted, why is the stock market up so high? Because people have confidence that the future is going to be better. Biden just got elected. We're getting a vaccine. The economy is going to get a lot better. Stock market looks at the future. How much is this going to be worth? You're placing bets on the future. It, seriously, I, I don't have the time to explain how the stock market works to you. Uh, go to YouTube and stop watching this. Go watch YouTube and say, how does the stock market work? But imagine how much the stock market would be up. We just hit 30,000. Imagine how high we would be if we didn't crash in February because people realized that Trump hadn't handled the, uh, uh, the coronavirus. Legislature. A judge can't do it. A state can't do it. An official can't do it. The only one that... What? How can a state not be able to do something? It can do it. it abolish signature verification requirements. Yeah. Just weeks prior to the election in violation of state law. Okay. In violation of state law. Now listen to what he says. You're not allowed to do that. It yeah. has to be approved by the legislature. Okay. A judge can't do it. Uh -huh. A state can't do it. That, that is the state. The state law is the state. How can a state not do something a state does? This guy's so moron. Like, seriously, they had that was the only take they got of this? An official can't do it. The but legislature members are officials. The only one that can do it is the legislature. That's not a one. That's multiple. The reason for this is clear. They were not verifying signatures because they know the ballots have not been filled out by the voters in whose names they were cast. In other words, people filled them out that had nothing to do with the names of the ballot. Uh, it's already been sort of and sorted out and certified in many states, Trippin. So, I mean, I, there's nothing to wait for. Thank you. I, I mean, I, I love a good buy, a fight, but it's, it's already certified. In all the swing states, we're, we're done. But, okay. A simple recount of the ballots under these circumstances only compounds the fraud. The only way to determine whether there was an honest vote is to conduct a full review of the envelopes in the relevant states. You will find that many of them, tens of thousands, have fraudulent signatures. A full forensic audit is required to ensure that only legal ballots from lawfully registered voters that were properly cast are included in the final count. This election is about great voter fraud. Fraud that has never been. This election is about great voter fraud. Uh, there he is, folks, the president of the United States of America. I've seen like this before. It's about poll watchers who were not allowed to watch. So illegal. It's about ballots that poured in and nobody. Uh, poll watchers not being allowed to watch does not overturn an election, by the way. But a few knew where they came from, but they were counted and they weren't for me. It's about. A lot of them were for you. Big leads on election night. Right. Tremendous leads. 
leads where I was being congratulated for a decisive, easy victory. And all of a sudden, by morning or a couple of days later, yeah. those leads rapidly evaporated. Right, which is exactly what we knew what was going to happen. That That's what everyone knew, including yourself, was going to happen. It's about numbers of ballots that were sent that nobody know where they came from. That nobody know where they came from. It's about Englishing that nobody know how speak. It's about machinery that was defective, machinery that was stopped during certain parts of the evening, miraculously to open with more votes. So many miracles in Trump's world. Sadly, not the one where the virus went away. It was about many other things. Oh, yeah. But above all, it was about fraud. Yeah. This election was rigged. Everybody knows it. I don't mind if I lose an election. <laughs> but I want to lose an election fair and square. Fairly and squarely. Sorry. What I don't want to do is have it stolen from the American people. Okay. That's what we're fighting for. Well, then stop. Just stop. Because 80 million of the American people voted for the other guy. Just like last time, more people voted for the lady. Okay? Just like the time before that, more people voted for the Democrat. Just like the time before that, more people voted for the Democrat. Just like the time before that, well, that time a Republican hit, got more votes. But he was during a wartime president. That was a different situation. But the time before that, when he got to be president, more people voted for the Democrats. Just like the time before that, more people voted for the Democrats. Just like the time before that, more people voted for the... Do you see where we're going here? The Republicans haven't won a non-wartime president popular vote since 1988. 1988. And that is 20 years ago. And we have no choice to be doing that. We already have the proof. We already have the evidence. And it's very clear. Many people in the media, yep. and even judges so far, have refused to accept it. Uh -huh. They know it's true. They know it's there. They, they don't know it's true. That's the thing with the judges. You have to show them that it's true. And just like this, you're not showing us anything. You haven't shown us any voter fraud yet. You did, you did show us a poster board, so... We did get to see you holding up a piece of paper, but I'll do, I'll do it like you. Little tiny fingers, little tiny fingers on the piece of paper. I can't even, I can't, here, there, there's you. There's Tom's full extended fingers. This is him pointing with his little tiny stubs. They know who won the election, but they refuse to say, you're right. Our country needs somebody to say you're right. Ultimately, I am prepared to accept any accurate election result. Yeah. And I hope that Joe Biden is as well. But we already have the <laughs> proof. We already have tens of thousands of ballots more than we need. Then how about submitting that somewhere? By the way, Giuliani's set to start right now in Michigan, I think, at some point. So we'll roll over and do another broadcast after a little break here. To overturn all of these states that we're talking about. Yeah. This is an election for the highest office in the greatest country in the history of the world. Okay. Every reasonable American should be able to agree, based on what we have already documented, that the only we one need that a can do systematic analysis of the mail-in ballots to review the uh, OAN is still showing this. I and I don't know. Yeah, and they're just showing it straight through. It looks like they're showing this back to back envelopes. It's about the signature. And if they're on the envelopes, we can only review the envelopes, and that will tell us everything. It this won't. is the absolute minimum we should expect. This uh, is what, not just what they want to do is find voting irregularities or maybe some signatures that don't match and throw out the entire state. This is their plan. They want to throw out entire states so that Nobody reaches 270, which is a constitutional question, because then it becomes a question of a quorum, but no one's ever answered that question. Since nobody reaches 270 after throwing out the states, does that mean that the number needed goes down in order to get a plurality or a majority of the states that actually send electors? Or does that mean nobody gets to 270 and it has to go to the House of, uh, House of Representatives, in which case Trump wins? 
Not that the Republicans control the House of Representatives, but each state gets one vote and more Republican states have a majority of members that are Republican than Democratic states. So he gets in in that case. It's, it's all very, it, it's a bunch of rigmarole, but we don't even know if his plan, if he can throw out all these states, we don't even know if that will work. Just about my campaign. But by the way, you can't throw out all these states. Although it has a lot to do with who's going to be your next president. This is about restoring faith and confidence in American elections. This is about our democracy and the sacred rights that generations of Americans have fought, bled, and died to secure. Nothing is more urgent or more important. The only ballots that should count in this election are those cast by eligible voters who are citizens of our country, residents of the states in which they voted, and nope. who cast their ballots in a lawful manner. Nope, nope, that is untrue. Uh, you can be a non-resident of a state and still vote. For example, if you're in Nevada and you've moved out of Nevada in October, you can still vote in Nevada. Still completely legal. If you are a resident of a military base, say in Afghanistan, and you want to vote in any state that you were previously a resident of, that's fine. Stop discounting the military, Mr. Trump. Manner ...before the legal deadline. Moreover, we must never again have an election in which there is not a reliable and transparent system to verify the eligibility, identity, and residency of every single person who casts a ballot, a very, very cherished ballot. Many very smart people have congratulated me on all we've done. The biggest tax cuts in history, uh, uh -huh. regulation cuts. That is not true. The biggest in the tax cuts, not the biggest tax cuts in history. It's not even close. Uh, the regulation cuts, sure. In history. Yeah. We rebuilt our military. We took care of our vets like never before. Space Force and so much more. He he did make up Space Force. But then they went on to say, as big and as important as these events were, the single greatest achievement in your presidency will be exactly what you're doing right now. Voter losing, losing, losing integrity for our nation. It's more important than any of the things that we discussed. If we don't root out the fraud, the tremendous and horrible fraud that's taken place. Uh, by the way, this is an infomercial is what this is. Th this is just raising money for Trump that he can use for his own personal gain. He can pay his expenses with it. He can pay his rent. He can pay, buy himself some nice wine and not drink it because he doesn't drink wine. Has a winery, doesn't drink wine. Um, but but this is just about raising money. He has no shot at winning and he knows it. In our 2020 election, we don't have a country anymore. We do have a country. Hold on. Yep, it's right there. So with the resolve and support of the American people, we will restore honesty and integrity to our elections, and we will restore trust in our system of government. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless America. Okay, there you go. That was, that was Trump's screed. Let's stop this. I think this is, oh, that's a U2 song. All right, well, we don't need to see that. Thank you. Me... This may be the most important speech okay, quiet. I've ever made. Quiet. Okay. Uh, so that's that, kids. Uh, Giuliani's going to be starting at some point. We'll start up the broadcast again there. Uh, I'm going to stop down, get myself a refill, um, and we will see you guys uh, uh, in just a little while. Where's my mask, Ted? I'm, I'm, I'm inside, and I'm the only one in here, so I'm not wearing a mask. Okay. Uh, guys, we'll see you soon. Here's some closing credits.
Kevin, thanks for that.